Good morning and welcome to the Do The Right Thing show. I am your host, Minister Alicia Clemens, and I am the host every third Sunday. The show airs every Sunday on Comcast TV 20 at 8 a.m. in the morning. And also you can view the show on demand at bgntvgospel.com. Amen. Today I have with me a guest, Louise Monticelli. And I'd like to introduce Louise to my audience. So, Louise, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I have for about 20 years been a spiritual director. A spiritual director is um, typically within the Roman Catholic tradition, someone who sits with people and listens to them uh, about the process of their spiritual journey. I myself am not a, a Roman Catholic, but came to this work because I desired to know God's will for my own life. And so I came to Manresa Jesuit Retreat House in Bloomfield Hills and talked to uh, some of the men and women there and said, would you help me figure out God's will for my life? And they said, well, come into the program we have here and we will give you tools to help you figure out God's will for your life. And as a result of doing that, I discovered that I had the same desire to help other people do that. And so I took the training there and I waited and God began to bring men and women to me to do the same for them. So for 20 years, I've been doing that. I have an office in Southfield where I meet with men and women to help them to sort out for themselves what is God's will, how can we know God's will, and then how can we live out God's will for our lives. I help them with tools to discern God's will, how to help develop a prayer life, to deepen their process of knowing and living out God's will for their lives, how to thrive in the middle of trials and tribulations they might be facing or the challenges just of living in our world today. And so it has been my delight over all this time to get to know God better myself, to know the scriptures better myself, and then to walk hand in hand with men and women as they encounter God and get to know God better themselves and walk with God through the ups and downs of life um, with my help and with the tools that I offer them. Amen. Thank you, Louise. And Louise is actually my spiritual director, and I came to um, come to Louise basically through my Ashland journey. I was going through seminary, and I came to one of those, you know, crossroads where I felt like everything around me was coming to a crashing halt, or I just was... I, it was at a point where I felt like I, I just didn't know what to do. You know, I was at that period in my time where, you know, the Ashland being in seminary and working full time and everything was just coming to a head and I needed some direction. And she was there for me and she's been guiding me ever since. <laughs> so um, I appreciate, you know, having a spiritual director. I also have Pastor Shirley, my, my spiritual mother and my pastor as well so it, it's not taking the place of your pastor but it's just giving you some extra guidance just like you would do a mentor in the secular world this is what you know in, in spiritual terms this is someone that you could come to for guidance and help you you know go through the journey of life you know your spiritual mm -hmm. walk amen? amen amen so before we get into the message I just want to say you know um, Start us off with prayer, and then we'll go right into the lesson. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time. As we open up your word, Lord, we just pray that you, we would decrease, that you would increase, that people will see the mercy of God through the, your word. And we just thank you, Lord, and we appreciate how much mercy and grace that you give to us and how you shower us with your love. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. 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 So today's lesson, we we're going to talk about mercy, and the Lord had given me um, Mark 10. So we're going to start there in Scripture. So if you could have your Bible with you, if you can open up to Mark 10. And in Mark 10, it's, it's funny when I, the Lord first gave me the Scripture, I was, I was, or the passage I was telling Louisa, I said, okay, what does this have to do with mercy? <laughs> 
I read this passage before. Help me to understand how mercy relates to this script, these scriptures. And it's funny because when you read it, when you dive into it, you, you know, you really see the mercy of God. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand the definition even of the mercy mercy in regards to the Bible term, not in um, just what you would get from a regular dictionary. But in Hebrew, the term mercy is also, it incorporates the term called hes, a, a, a Hebrew term, and it's loving kindness. So it talks about God's covenant loving kindness. So it's more than just have him having compassion on us, but it's his loving kindness. And we know in scripture it says it endures forever. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. never stops. So when we co go into the specific sections of this this passage, then we talk we see that God is talking about his loving kindness being poured out on us as his beloved. So the first one passage he talks in um, 1 through 12 is about divorce. So in here he talks about the, the Pharisees come to Jesus and they want to test him and they said, is it lawful to divorce? And today we see divorces all over, but in that time that was not the case. And Jesus answered him, well, what did Moses tell you to do? And he said, well, Moses let us get a divorce, right? But then Jesus said, well, that wasn't the way God intended it because God is a covenant keeper, right? So if God wants to keep covenant with us and he established marriage as a covenant and because of his love, initially, you know, when he loved Adam and he didn't want him to be alone, so why then would he want us to divorce? And so Jesus was saying, no, when a man, male leaves his mother and his father, he cleaves to his wife and the two become one in flesh. And that's the way it's supposed to be. So where's God's mercy in that? So God is saying that not a man should separate what he's put together. He's saying, I love you enough that, guess what? If that man divorces that woman, then, and she, she will, and she marries again, she would then be in adultery and vice versa. He said, I love you enough that I don't want you to enter into an ad adulterous relationship. So I'll give you the certificate of divorce, but just know this, that's not my perfect mm -hmm. will. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is that what, what you get from that? <laughs> What, what do you see that's in that passage? So, so you're saying God's mercy then is to warn you ahead of time <laughs> of what the consequences are. Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm saying is that God is saying, well, this is what I interpret is, God is saying, I don't want you to divorce, but because of the hardness of their heart, I allowed it because what I'm trying to do here in this covenant relationship you are not allowing my mercy to mm -hmm. penetrate yeah, the hardness sure. of your heart. Right, right. Because if, if, if you were open and receptive to my loving kindness towards right. you, right. then you would change. Okay, sure. You would change your attitude. Mm -hmm. But we know that they, they didn't. So he said, okay, instead of you just falling into sin, mm. I have mercy for you, that's so I'm going to yes, yes, that's, that's so compassion. I'm going to let you divorce, mm -hmm. <laughs> as opposed to what would be the alternative, them to fall in sin. Right. So that's all. Okay. <laughs> so you know when when we when the Lord talks about you know the hardness of the heart, you know he's he's not talking about your physical heart, the organ. He's he's talking about you know your your emotional side. Right? Mm -hmm. He's talking mm -hmm. about the seat of your emotions, your mm -hmm. heart. Mm -hmm. And so when when he talks about you have to love love him because he's loving you. And it's a it's a joint effort. If we if that's the mercy of God is to show us him showing us his love and us receiving it and showing others love back. 
it's not mercy for that man to put that wife away. Mm-hmm. It's really mm-hmm. not. And I think that's part of what Jesus is saying here. Your heart was so hard, you had no love and no compassion mm-hmm. for your wife mm-hmm. that you would just dismiss her and put her away. Mm-hmm. But my love for you endures forever. Mm-hmm. And you couldn't receive it because your heart was hard. Hard, yeah, right, yeah. right. Amen. Amen. So the, the next section is, he's talking about the little children. And then we were having a conversation about the kids, well, in terms of Bart, Bart, um, blind Bart, um, Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus later on in, yeah. the, in the section. In the yeah. section. But here he has these little children that come up to him. And the disciples say, you know, get away. I'm paraphrasing. Get away, get away. Um, we, we, he's too busy. But once again, he shows up with his mercy. Yeah, and, Jesus is indignant, it says. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But not only did he, t- he tell them, no, don't, don't mess with the kids. He brought them in, on his lap and he put his hands on them and he blessed mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. So what does it mean that, for him to bless them? We, when we think about the blessings of God, um, it's a Jewish tradition. I don't know that a lot of Christians do it, the blessing, like a blessing ceremony. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the mercy of God is, is to bless us, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And the way they, they, they did it in the Old Testament, you know, was they would, the priest would bless the congregation. Mm-hmm. So here Jesus is this priest, mm-hmm. and he's blessing these little mm-hmm. children. Mm-hmm. So once again, we see that mercy, the loving kindness of God, that he is pouring out his blessings. And, and we don't even know if these kids were orphaned or not. Maybe mm-hmm. they didn't have a father. And here Jesus comes because it was a fa- if it wasn't the priest, it was a father's duty to bless mm-hmm. the children. And we see that all throughout the scripture and you know, the Old Testament, the blessings. But these little kids, once again, they're being blessed. And even he says... Um, uh, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. So he even uses that as a teaching point. Um, at, it's a point of mercy too. Is look into your own heart and and be like a child. Yeah. And so um, there's there's mercy there too. He's recognizing the children, but he's also sort of slowing things down for his disciples and everybody else. So here's mercy as well. It's like, everybody, slow down. (laughs) (laughs) Stop being so indignant and slow down and pay attention to what's really important. So that's mercy as well. Absolutely. And and I don't know about you, Louise, but I have a busy life. (laughs) Yes, well, that's what I was thinking. So that's mercy too, you know, sometimes slow down, you know, because even indignation is sort of like, okay, we have to get on with it here. And Jesus is saying, we need to change the pattern. Yes, and it teaches me from the the same standpoint because at times that I can be rushed because I'm trying to get something done Mm -hmm. in a specific time, but it's the mercy that comes pulls me back and say, guess what? They have Mm -hmm. to get something done, Mm -hmm. too. Even Mm -hmm. when we're driving, people are like racing, trying to get to where they're going, but they ignore the fact that that person in the next lane, they're trying to get somewhere, too. So we have to have, you know, we have to promote and walk in a a spirit of love towards other people in terms of having mercy towards them because whatever they're going through, we may not know. Indeed. 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 But they're going through something, and if we would slow down and pay attention, Mm -hmm. we might see. Yeah. And we may have an opportunity to bless them. Oh, yes. Indeed. (laughs) Indeed. (laughs) Yes. Right. Right. For sure. And the next area is um, where we get into the young man. So here, the rich young man. The rich young man. Yes, the rich young man. So here we, this rich man comes to, and he's a young guy. Sounds. um, So he comes up to Jesus and he tells him, you know, ask him. First he says, "Good teacher," and Jesus, you know, kind of rebukes him and said, "Why do you call me good? No one's good but the Father." 
But then he asked, well, what, you know, what is it that you want from me? And he, he asked them, well, I want to receive eternal life. You know, how do I do that? How do I get salvation? And Jesus tells him, well, hey, have you kept the Ten Commandments, basically? And he's like, oh, yeah, I've done that since I was young, since I was, you know, he must have been much, he must have been much younger. Since I was a kid, I've done that. But he says, well, okay, well, if you've done all of that, then I guess the only thing for you to do is just to sell everything you have and then follow me. Well, he looked pretty sad, pretty glum about that because it says here that um, he was wealthy and that he had a lot of possessions and he wasn't willing to give up his possessions in order to follow Jesus. So what is that telling us about our possessions, the things that we try to hold on to? You know, we, we sometimes we try to hold on to possessions that don't get us eternal life. And God is still, even in this, Jesus still, he loved him. Mm-hmm. And he yeah. was sad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because he he was sad because he would he would choose not the mercy of God and believe that God will have have access to everything, cattle on a thousand hill, and anything that he lost, even like with disciples, Peter was like, We we lost everything. We gave up everything to walk with you, to follow you. And Jesus was like, well, you really didn't give up anything because whatever you had is nothing compared mm-hmm. to what you have with, mm-hmm. within, you know, mm-hmm. eternal life. That's everything. What you will get from God is all, more than, he's more than enough. So that's his mercy. He's telling us. We worry so much about the the material things oh i have to look a certain way i have to have a certain job i have to have a certain title and all of those things are going to get you nowhere they're not going to get us in heaven where they they're going to rust and rot and everything on earth and like solomon says you work and you work and you work and guess what you die somebody else is going to get you in here well but even on on earth i mean um I mean, this is a young man and so um a part of it is he hasn't figured that out yet and jesus is lovingly trying to show him some mercy and say i will help you get your priorities in order mm-hmm. if you will I mean, come and pretty drastic me. sell all you have <laughs> and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven then come and follow me and so, obviously, the, the man isn't yet ready right. um, to figure out how he can do that. Um, and it may be just his youth. Um, maybe he isn't ready to do that. Um, and, and it's unfortunate that in our world today, we have held up wealth mm-hmm. and prestige and position as being the way to get ahead. Yeah. And um, by God's mercy... As we kind of lose those things, mm-hmm. um, if we will reach out to God in his mercy, he teaches us how to have a life anyway and not to be in despair. Right. Um, that there is life after you've um, lost your job or after you've um, made some financial mistakes, right. after the economy goes down or whatever Um, but this this young man hasn't figured that out yet Um, in fact as you read on sometimes I think this is as much a lesson for the disciples as it is for the the young man because they say um, who then can be saved I mean they're looking at themselves and saying we've given up everything to follow you and we're still not settled on that, you know. And so yeah. um, Jesus seems to be using every opportunity here to continue to call people, even us, to deeper levels of discipleship. Mm-hmm. And that's part of his mercy to um, say, I, you know, have you, have you surrendered everything? Are you still holding on to things for your security? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and I think that is a key word, security. Because we think that security is in possessions. Yeah, yeah. You know. Or our health. Yeah. Or our, you know, um, our friendships or our, you know, something. Um, I, and, I, and I see that in the work that I do, um, where people will come to me um, who are doing just fine in their faith, and then something happened. A lot of times it's a health crisis where they're doing just fine, and then they got that diagnosis, or they lost that job, or they yeah. got that divorce. Right. And um, then all of a sudden their, their faith is shattered, and, and where is God now? I thought God was going to, you know, protect me or take care of me. And now my faith is, um, you know, I'm feeling very vulnerable. And, and I'm wondering if God has abandoned me. Yes. And so then we have to go back and recover, you know, what is the basis of your faith? Could God still be there with you? But now we have to look back at what are the promises of God? And it's by God's mercy then that there are scriptures like this. Yeah. And yeah. he did promise never to leave you or forsake you, you know. Mm -hmm. and I think that goes back to the definition about God's covenant. Yes. His love, his, his, him not going against his word. He has a covenant with promises as part of his loving kindness. That's the mercy of God. Yes. And it's hard for us when we're going through a trial. It's hard. Yes. Because yeah, all you right. see is what's in front of you. I was just having a conversation with someone whose husband is having a um, health issue and he's struggling in his right. job because they won't move him to another area. And she's, you know, very upset with the, the supervisor, managers, because they won't move her husband. I said, well... You don't know what God's doing. Yes. I remember the story you told me about your husband. Yes. So you don't know what God's doing. That's his grace. He may be in the mix right there, and the reason why he's doing that because he set you yes. up for a blessing. So yes. we can't get stuck on that, right? Right. Right. Okay. Right. All right. So let's go on with this. Um, we're going to skip down to blind Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus. Why yes. am I struggling with his name? I don't know. <laughs> well, here in, in this um, portion of scripture, this is where we get to the crux of it, where this is where we hear the word mercy first in, in this whole chapter, the actual word, because he is sitting there in this position where he's begging at the side of the road, and then he hears Jesus' arrival. So he, he's blind, but he can hear, and he hears him, and then he shouts. He wants to get his attention. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And he says that twice because the disciples are trying to, once again, they're trying to hush him up like they try to dismiss the children and saying, look, he don't have time for you. Be quiet. There's a lot of people here that want his attention, but he shouts more, and then he gets Jesus' attention. Yes. Yes. And then what does he do? The disciples said, okay, come on, he wants to see you. You know, paraphrasing. And, and he throws off his cloak. And that, that part of the scripture really caught my attention. He throws off his cloak. And what does that cloak symbolize? Because that cloak was partly, it was his security. We just talked right. about security. Right. And... You had mentioned his identity before. Yes. His identity. So he was a beggar, and he was identified as being a beggar by that cloak that he wore, that outer garment. It signified, I am a beggar. But when, what happens was Jesus, in his mercy, he wouldn't dismiss him because it was something about him. There was a lot of people, I'm sure, screaming. It was a busy place in the middle of the street. And, but this man... Why this man did he give an ear to? Well, we can we can guess, you know, that there was something that changed in this man's life. There was a shift when he decided, I want this enough now at this point in my yeah. life that I'm going to throw off. My, my old nature, my old man, and I'm going to seek after what God has for me. 
I am no longer using begging as my security, mm -hmm. as my mm -hmm. provision. I want what God has. Indeed. And so Jesus, he does what he says he would do. He kept covenant and he healed him. He had mercy on him. And they healed him and he immediately received sight. And what did he do? Before he was sitting by the side of the road, now he's walking. He's with following Jesus. Jesus. Yes. yes. Right. On the same. You think of the courage that it took um, to call out, to make himself known. And, and even that he knew, even though he is blind, um, this is like a prophetic word uh, because he calls Jesus son of David, um, which is unique, um, that he knew who Jesus was. So I see this as a prophetic thing, mm -hmm. that of all the men in this crowd, that he, he knew who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. And then he has the courage, not just to beg, but to throw off that cloak, as you said, which would have been his security, mm -hmm. his identification as the beggar, he's, he is literally setting aside his occupation. Mm -hmm. He is throwing all caution to the wind now and saying, I'm setting aside my former occupation. I am throwing everything aside to follow you, Jesus, whether you heal me or not, really. Yeah, and if you're out there right now, because we're running out of time, and you're at a point a crossroads where you're saying, Jesus, I need you now. Mm -hmm. I need you to heal me. I need you to change the situation. I, I need you in whatever area of my life. Maybe you have fell away from the things of God. Maybe you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But if you are at that place now and you want to receive him, we're going to lead you in a prayer that you would receive Jesus Christ today. So just tell him, Lord, just confess your sin. I'm a sinner. Whatever it is, you confess it to Christ. And say, and you tell him, I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. And I want to accept him into my life as my Lord and Savior. If you said this prayer, go to a Bible-believing church and get into the Word. We're out of time. God bless you. And remember, do the right thing. My name is Mike Duggan and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves and you're watching Bell Global Network. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine AG and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times, and you are watching Bell Global Network. And it seems you never ever let me drown. You're my life, girl, my security. You took my insecurities and put me in the lion's den and took out all the fear of me and gave My, my soul says thank you. My, my, my soul says thank you.